Blackbusters. What's cracking, family? We are back at it again with another episode of Blackbusters, the best movie review podcast in the world. In the world, Craig. In the world, Craig. In the world, Craig. I'm your host, Big Ja, mm-hmm. and this is my co-host, uh, Tone Two. Tone Two. Tone Two. It was either going to be Tone Deep. Which kind of felt oh. a little pornographic, right? Oh. <laughs> right. So uh-huh. I couldn't do that one. So if Tyrese is O2, I'm 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 tone, tone two. two. I'm tone. Tone two. I'm tone two. Tyrese as O2 mm-hmm. on in the film Waist Deep. Yeah. Waist Deep, man, 2006. Mm-hmm. Hood banger. You know? Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 06. Almost 20 years ago, man. Time flies. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, man. Uh, Waist Deep, Tyrese Gibson, uh, Baby Girl, uh, Megan Good. Megan Good. Lorenz Tate. Lorenz Tate. The Game. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it was written by Von D. Curtis Hall, Darren Scott, Michael Mahern, and directed by Von D. Curtis Hall. He did good. He did. He did good. He did. Yeah. Um, you know what? Let me just start by saying this. When I see... Uh, when I see uh, L.A., I'm, I'm an L.A. boy. We L.A. guys, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when I see movies depicting L.A., I'll be looking to see how authentic it looks. Yeah, yeah. They got that. Yes. It's authentic. Yeah. I feel it. I, I felt like I was looking at a movie that's in L.A. Yeah. And the actors are from L.A. Even if they aren't, mm-hmm. they they make me feel that they are. The location scouting. The location scouting was, 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 was from people that know that neighborhood. Yes. You could tell, yeah, and so off that alone, I'm a, the, that, that could make or break a project for me. If you mm-hmm. if you show me some West Coast LA stuff, and I feel like we're not we're not it's not in LA, mm-hmm. all right. Um, in this case, they passed that test. It's a good look. Um, Tyrese is an ex con. His name is O two. That's what the hood calls him. Yep. Um, Otis Junior is his name. I think that's his name. And it was Otis, I believe. Yeah. Uh, O2. Otis. Yeah. Otis. Uh huh. Otis Samuel. Yeah. Senior. Yeah, indeed. And uh he um is ex con working security at a security job, right? Mm-hmm. And he's a single father taking care of his son. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? His mom is not in the picture. The mom is not in the picture. And so the movie starts off with him just being being at work and him going to go pick his son up from school. Mm-hmm. And uh any given day in LA, he got a nice little uh, rag top. What he was? What was he driving? Not an Impala necessarily, but it was something. Yeah, yeah it was convertible. Yeah, it was nice as a convertible something. Yeah, it was nice. And uh, he picked his son up from school. His son's in the back seat, chilling, mm-hmm. having a good time. And he uh, he's at a light. Yeah, a light in the hood. And sometimes night or daytime could be a bad look for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because he gets carjacked. Some dudes run up on him, put a gun in his face, and get out the car right now. Now let me ask you a question. Did you, because I'm, I'm trying to remember the, you know, how the story played out. But do you think the carjacking was purely coincidence? You find out that it or was it, or or it was a, it was yeah. always a setup, right? It was yes. always a setup to not only take the car but take the boy, right? Okay, we don't know that at the beginning. At first, we thought it was just a, a regular carjacking, mm-hmm. which could happen in L.A. Um, I know a few people who've been that, and some of them didn't make it. Right, you know what I'm saying. So, and it was daytime or nighttime. Uh, so yes, I thought it was a carjacking that happened to go wrong. Just a rando, it, yeah, a random, random carjack. They had his son in the back, and they drove off with his son in the back. Not, and we later found out that that was the that that was by design. Mm-hmm. All right, so, um, he gets carjacked. He runs after the car. It's too late. Car's gone, mm-hmm. and he finds out that. Who had who who jacked his car? He asked his homeboy, his homeboy playing Lorenz Tate, who plays a great, great hood LA nigga. Ah, it's so it's so interesting because watching Lorenz Tate's Lucky, the whole movie I was asking myself, is he in on it? Boom. Right? Okay. Like the whole movie. Yes. I was like, cause see, cause he was supposed to be picking up Junior right. from, you know, from the school. And he didn't. So that's right. why Tyrese has to leave the job with the gun. Um, he's in contact with, with games people, mm-hmm. big meat. Like he knows, you know, where Junior is. He owes money, right? So let me, let's, let's get to that. Let's <laughs> right, get to that. Right, right. So I did think 
Oh, uh, we're on the same page. I thought that Lucky was a little involved in the situation. Yeah. He was supposed to pick up Jill Jr. and he did not. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and instead, he had to leave work and go do it. He right. has in Liberty State, I mean, uh, Tyrese. Uh, O2. O2. Mm-hmm. O2 picks his son up and gets jacked. They take his car with his son in the back seat. Mm-hmm. Um, he's running after his son. And, um, and then he goes to the Red States crib, Lucky. Mm-hmm. Hey, bro, you had one job, dog. You couldn't do that. You were sitting here over here getting high, being silly, doing mm-hmm. nothing. And so you kind of think, like, ah, that's what happened. He was probably like, backstory, you start thinking, like, yeah. uh, Big Meat Pauls is mm-hmm. the game's character. Mm-hmm. He plays, like, the, the one of the big drug dealers or one of the big hood, yeah. like, leaders of some he con- crew. He controls some territory. He controls a lot of the territory in uh, L.A. on on in, this, in these areas. And he is connected to Lucky. Mm-hmm. He's connected to uh they have he has an old history with O2. We mm-hmm. find that out later. Yep, yep. Um so it could have been a situation where Lucky was like, Hey man, if you know you I know you're trying to get a hold of him, but uh yeah, I'm supposed to pick up his son from school mm-hmm. tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I want you now, you ain't gonna pick him up. Yeah. We gotta make sure he picks him up. But at the same time, uh I don't this is why I don't think that Lucky was involved, even before we find out that he wasn't. Yeah. Lucky could have picked him up and still got carjacked. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and, uh, and so instead of saying, instead of Jackie O2, you could just Jack Lucky. Lucky is suspicious for me the entire movie, right? Mm-hmm. A, it's suspicious that he's business acquainted with the crew that, that carjacks O2 right. and takes Junior. Mm-hmm. That's suspicious. The other piece is that he owes money and he knows he owes money. Even in the end, and I know I'm jumping all the way to the end, mm-hmm. things just happen to work out for Lucky. Right. He's actually set O2 up, right? Like mm-hmm. O2 thinks he's showing up with Lucky to for the for the jewelry exchange on the money, and games people are there, right? And that's because Lucky snitched. He didn't know that there was going to be a plan and that O2 was going to Jason boring himself out of the situation. It just so happened to work out that way. Um, but he's kind of shady the whole movie. He's always calling and asking. Like, the way he asked O2, you getting that money? You know, you got to get that money. You got to find that money. Like, you find that money yet? Right? Like, it's just like, that seems like somebody that's in on it. Right, Maybe like, <laughs> or or it seems like this is an untrustworthy, untrustworthy ass nigga that yeah. you got love for. Yeah, because yeah, not, uh, be not untrustworthy too. like he gonna snake you, like he's not gonna stab you in the back, mm-hmm. but he's going to do things and finesse things to kind of help him in his face, yeah, and help benefit him in the long run, yeah. Um, until it comes time to see you get killed and then I save your life, and then he steps up, yeah, yeah because he because he, he wasn't in on it. He is a he, he's a guy that he he's a he's a half ass nigga. Yeah, he's the type of dude that does shit not complete. He does shit seventy percent, mm-hmm. and and he's on no drugs room. too. And you know what I'm saying, well, he, he wasn't on like powder and no shit like that. I mean, what crack? That? I mean, he was smoking, he was he was smoking was the weed. weed. Yeah. yeah, okay, so yeah, he might have been laced. It might have yeah. been the primo or something. You know, it's, it might sounds like a seventies Republican. He's on the he's on the reefer. He's on the he's, <laughs> he's on the, the grass. <laughs> he's on the grass. Now, right. um, he's all right, so. And and, and and we are jumping around a lot, but that, that's okay because, yes, Lucky plays Lorenz Tate, and and we, and Lorenz, Tate, Lorenz Tate plays Lucky, mm-hmm. and we do kind of feel like, damn, is he is he is he about to stab his dick on too? But I don't think he is. I just think he's not too smart, right? And I mean, and, and and he's the type of dude that can't get right. Yeah, yeah you always you fucking up the lead. Just go pick up my son, your nephew. I mean, it's you can't very get that right? stupid that like, like a. Lucky, we, we're spending a little time on Lucky. Lucky knows how O2 is, you know, getting this money, right? Like, you know, because O2 links with Megan Good's character Coco, and they decided they're going to raise the money. Right. Right? They're going to raise the money because there's a bounty or, you know, a ransom on Junior. And so um, Lucky knows, you know, all the different banks – that they're robbing and things that they're, you know, the different spots that they're doing. Why would you go to game what? with the jewels? I, I thought that too. Um, because the jewel, he, he went to a safety deposit box. All right, so real quick, real quick, real mm-hmm. quick. Um, uh, 
we got Tyrese's character O2 driving, mm -hmm. and this girl walks up past him. Yeah. She's selling dresses and clothes and stuff like mm -hmm. that. That girl name is uh Coco. Maybe Good. Her name is Coco. He she basically distracts him, right? Yep. He gets his attention. She flirting with him and this and the other. And then next you know, she walks off and he gets jacked. He's not seeing niggas pull up. He got mm -hmm. he gets jacked, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so now that he he feels like she's in on it. So after he gets jacked and they well, drive off without the car, they, yeah, when they drive mm -hmm. off with the car. He sees her still watching as a standby, as a, a, a bystander. He goes approaches her, mm -hmm. choke, uh, hems her up. It's like you gonna tell me what you know about what just happened. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And she's like, take me back to wherever you know these niggas be at. They jack me. <laughs> right. Makes her take. Makes him take. Makes her take him back to this this uh, chop shop, basically, where uh, Darius Love, Darius Love, which I love his character. Yeah. <laughs> I, li I, li I like him. He used to be yeah. in more shit. Yeah. And he plays rock. Yeah, and um, and I guess he's like her pimp or something like that too, or he, he he's in control of her in some yeah, way. Yeah, um, if not her, another dude. Actually, and it was another guy that she kept talking about was like had her. Captive. But he's he's a minion. He's a minion that's like slapping her up mm -hmm. and gets beat up by Tyrese's character. Yeah, and um, in her honor or something like that. Uh, he basically was an extra. He he, he had no real reason to be in the movie other than, other than to play that that part in that scene. Mm -hmm. I thought that he should have been in the movie a little more. Um, and that's that's okay. That's just how I get there. I be yep. I be when I, when I see characters and actors I like. I be wanting to see more of them. Yep, yep. But uh, so now he's basically put her in a situation. And she's like, "Hey, man, I'm in a bad spot. I don't have nobody but this guy. Mm -hmm. If I t if I help you." Um, it's gonna me. It's gonna fall back on me. And I'm yeah. gonna get killed. I'm dead out here. I'm dead out here. He said, "Well, if you don't help me, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do something to you," which I don't believe he would. Right, right. And if but if you do help me, I can help you get yourself out of this situation. You can yeah. leave town, win, win, and be gone. Mm -hmm. And she said, "Man, I you ain't never. She ain't never had a, a man or anybody try to help her get out of her situation." And this is after he physically defended her. Right, right. Like and, you know, whoop whooped on homie. Yeah, on a rock. Yeah. So she sees that okay. like. He's capable. And he's capable. For one, he just as gangster as these dudes out here. Yeah. And he has his son that that's his motive. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not gonna stop. Right. So she she got a very driven man mm -hmm. that is on her side. She's in she's on, on his side. She's in on it. Right. She, I'm in now. So yeah. now I know I know his whole operation. I know Rock's operation. Mm -hmm. I know Meat's operation. I know everyone's operation. And you know what? Like, it's believable because obviously Coco can be taken in by strong men mm -hmm. a part of the reason why she's in the trouble that she's in is because she's under the thumb of of, of men of right. guys right? right she just happened to find one that you know is more like closely aligned mm -hmm. to maybe like doing right and doing good right but Bef before we go a little bit too far in the story what did you think about tyrese's acting um I'm gonna keep it a hundred. People, people respond. People have made comments about his acting, um, and I don't know. Is it me? I, I don't really be distracted by it too much. See, I think that like Tyrese plays a great grump. Yeah, he just always oh, angry. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like he's a great grump, and because he stays in that pocket, you don't really get any other emotions besides grumpy, right? Mm -hmm. He's kind of grumpy the entire movie. Yeah. Okay. Right? Okay. And, and so, so in a way, he pulls it off because he don't really do too much. Mm -hmm. You know, when he's making love, he's grumpy, right? Like when he's robbing niggas, he's grumpy. When he's talking to Lucky, he's grumpy. So I think that, like, he plays like a, like a, like a good, bitter grumpy, angry hood bro. Right. right. So I think he pulls it off. Now what about Megan Good? Mm. Did Megan Good pull off what's supposed to be an around the way girl in Waste Deep? <sighs> okay. We know Lorenz State did his thing as lucky. Oh yeah. Lorenz he does work but, though. But was Megan Good's Coco believable to you? Was it believable? I'm gonna say yes, because I I know girls like making good. Mm -hmm. They went to Westchester and they went to Hamilton and Laces and mm -hmm. shit like that. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying they they didn't go to Jefferson, right? Or Dorsey or Crenshaw or Washington. They didn't go to those schools. 
those girls I know went to the Hamlet. They still hood, but they like hood adjacent. Yeah. They went to like, like I said, the Westchesters. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, I like I said, I I didn't um it wasn't the for example, there were times where I watched a movie and I'd be like, man, why the guy her doing this? Yeah, why the guy him doing this? Yeah. They could have had somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Could they have somebody else for her for sure? Did she do could could, could she be replaced for sure? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um uh, I, I don't think she did a bad enough job for me to be like, oh nah, man, get her out of here. What is yeah. talk? What does make good do, doing acting? No, yeah, not yeah. at all. It's is she did she is she Taraji mm-hmm. play Yvette? Right. No, Yvette is for sure went to all those schools I mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Yvette, Yvette yeah. for sure. That's that. You know that's a really good comparison, Yvette. That's a really good comparison. You know what I'm saying, and no disrespect to making good. I, I thought she's a she's a beautiful woman, and um, she's a solid actress. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I've never looked at making good and be like, mm, get her out of there. Me personally, no, I haven't. I love. I, making I, good. I like making good. So, yeah. um, and because, but to be like, if, if we were giving her superhood, I felt like. Her personality, her character, she is the girl that's like doesn't belong in the hood. Okay. So that hits the you mark. You know what I'm saying? That hits the mark for me. So kind of like, yeah, yeah I'll yeah. take that. Yeah. Uh she hence she ends up doing well. She like she's up, real fish out of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But not, right? Right, 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 right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, and, and I know, and she's a foster kid too. Yeah. She's a foster kid. So she's probably been and she probably grew up halfway in the or Montebello, yeah, and Compton, yeah, yeah. Culver City. And she's in LA caught up now. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got a homeboy who's a foster kid, him and his brother, mm-hmm. and he a hood nigga. He grew up in Watson, Compton, this and the other. He got his brother who's a year older than him or mm-hmm. a year or two, a year and a half, whatever, yeah. grew up in like Whittier. Right, right. Two different types of niggas. So they it, had different. So they both from the hood. They both foster kids, mm-hmm. but the one is this grew up, he, he grew up so different. And this other one grew up in this area. So I can see making good being, her being a foster kid makes sense. And she's not comfortable anywhere. Right. Right. So I'll I'll take whatever acting she gave us as a LA street girl, mm-hmm. I'll take it because she's not she didn't probably grow up mom grandmama's house. She didn't grow up the same way that Jody's mom did. Jody's yeah. mom grew, yeah, yeah, yeah. grew up in that house that yeah. now she owns because her grandmother passed away. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so she grew up in that neighborhood the whole whole life. This this foster kid girl, Coco, she grew up everywhere. Yeah. She probably stayed in Oakland for a couple of times. She probably stayed in San Diego, mm-hmm. Compton. San she's Bernardino. Everywhere. She has yeah. no 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 culture, no, 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 no fan, no, no family. This is really good. You've done good work there. Boom. Like, so for me, so what's interesting is is that at first I was like, well, you can't just throw a mini skirt and some hoop earrings on any black girl and make her hood. Right. And call her hood. Right. Mm-hmm. And so at first I thought that's kind of like, oh, you know what I mean? Um, but making good does play the character well with a certain charm mm-hmm. that like is believable, but I, you know, but she's still sweet making good. Right. She's still the making good that we all Disney. love. You know what I mean? Like, Disney. you know, our our cousin. Um, but I do think that like she pulled it off well. I just feel like like making good is like our generation Zendaya, right? Oh. And I almost feel like Zendaya would not have to do waist deep. Oh no, she in wouldn't. her career, right? No, not at all. And so the fact that like Megan Good has to do waist deep to work, I appreciate her for the try and the effort, but fundamentally she doesn't belong in this movie, <laughs> right? Does that make sense? And I'm not knocking her, right? Like, you know, because she's an actress. Mm-hmm. But, like, this is not the... And she does good in this movie. Right. But, like, I don't necessarily feel like she should have been in in, in Waste Deep. Right. Okay, so she's from... Me and her the same age. She's uh, she's actually a couple years, a couple months older than me. Mm-hmm. And she's from Panorama City. Yeah. Right. And Santa Clarita. Right, mm-hmm. so she's up that way. Yeah. So she's different black. She's not a hood girl. She's not a hood chick. Yeah. So I get it. Mm-hmm. So I get it. You know, um, uh, she's a black girl. She's a sister. She's definitely not whitewashed. None of like that. that. None of that. Um, yeah. None of that. But she could have easily, like, let's say this girl, Coco, had a sister uh, that, that also was a foster kid but grew up in Panorama City, mm-hmm. not in South Central. Yeah. She would play that girl. Yeah. She would play the sister of, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, Coco, you should stop doing this. Yeah. You're better than this. Well, you know, everyone didn't grow up with foster parents that put him into private school. Yeah. She's that girl. Right. 
You know what I'm saying? So right. Coco, but the question is now, who plays Coco? That age range. See, this that's is, really interesting this because is nineteen, this is 2006. Yeah. And and this is Megan turning the corner off the kitty stuff. Right. So I appreciate the effort. She, she probably asked for this. Yeah. Like she wanted this particular role. Uh-huh. Um so I don't know, like who right. else, you know. I'm gonna keep it a hundred. People our age, the women in our age, think yeah. of it like as far as singers, we got the Beyonce's, mm-hmm. we got the Alicia Keys's, you know what I'm saying? Those women are in our age, the Ashanti's, they're in their forties now. You know what I'm saying? Right. Back then when they were who, but as a as an actress, how many women that are now the women that was acting back then was the Taraji's who were older than us mm-hmm. by ten years. Mm-hmm. The Sanas, the Neil Longs. These are the women that were acting, that, that, that were the leading black actresses. Yeah. And none you know of them saying? belong in this movie. That's either. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So at this point, you had to either introduce a new face or a woman that's reinventing herself as Damn. a leading, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm and, trying to think. Yeah. Because after that, think of it, think of it like the women who are doing their thing now. The Zoe Kravitz, she's in her 30s. Yeah, yeah. She would be, she would be a teenager. Um, what's her name? Uh, Tessa Thompson. Tessa mm-hmm. Thompson once again is our age, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. she and she's the same age as making good one uh, give her give or take a year or two, but she's another girl that's kind of valley, yeah, not from the hood. I yeah. think she's from Culver City. She's from like the <coughs> super west side. See, like, could you have cast Monica? No, because she can't act. She can't act. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And here's the thing. Yeah. I'm going to keep it 100. Not mm-hmm. saying, Monica, I love you. You're one of my favorite female vocalists. Yeah. Probably my favorite. Um, uh, I'm not dissing you. You ain't did nothing in the movie to make me feel like you could do that. Yeah. So she might be able to act. She might have been the only one. You know what I'm saying? And Brandy's from here. You know what I'm saying? By way of Virginia or something like that. But She can't play that role either. Come on, man. Yeah, she That's can't what play I'm that saying. role either. Yeah, it's so, tough. You young, know, it's, 2006, a black girl from the hood from South Central L.A. Yeah. Who was going to play that? Megan Good. Right. Because, Neil, think about it like this. In Friday, Megan Good was a little girl. Neil Long was mm-hmm. the young girl in her 20s playing Friday in, 20, in 96. You made a lot of good points. Ten years ago. Yeah. You made a lot of good you know points. What I'm saying? Right? So, I mean, like, you know, it's it's interesting because, you know, they have Megan Good playing a hustler. She's yeah. an in the streets right. hustler. She knows spots. She's mm-hmm. in and out of spots. And I think Megan did well, but I think it was definitely challenging. What you could have did. Mm-hmm. Absolutely right. Right. And because I'm a for one, I'm a fan of Megan Good, so I like to see her on screen. 100%. So that's why I didn't have a problem with her being in this project. 100%. Now, I mean, Yvette Taraji could have easily played this. You said mm-hmm. she is older, but so Ty- Tyrese. But yeah. she, and this girl didn't have to be twenty three. She could have been twenty eight. Yeah, she could have been because uh, this dude Tyrese character got a whole son that's yeah. like ten. <laughs> right, right. You know right, what I'm saying? So right. the Taraji could have been a woman that could yeah. have had a ten year old too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it could have been that. You know what I'm saying? The fact that it was making good didn't bother me. I'm it a, didn't. It and didn't bother- I want her to win. So this is my first time at you no know, six seeing a movie like the, like a, a, a major film like Waist Deep mm-hmm. starring Tyrese. And making good, yeah. We ain't seen making good in this scene, in, in this in this type of role before, right? I'm here for it. And so the the, the and the only reason why I bring any of this up, and we can get back to you the story, to. is when it's the scene where they're in the bank. I knew it. I knew it. Okay. I knew it. <laughs> and Megan's supposed to to run interference and a distraction as the angry black woman. Black girl. That it's that part shows. I gotta go back and watch that. Yeah, I gotta go back and that watch that. That scene shows that, like, ah, yeah, not ah. quite. Like you can't. Like well, that's not did, you. You needed Taraji. You needed Jada Pinkett exactly. Smith. There, there was there you know was a, there was like she was Regina there. Hall. Yeah, you ain't gonna take my check. You ain't gonna take my money. Da da da. And it's just like. <laughs> not hey, quite queen. Tone two wasn't fucking with yeah, it. Yeah, not just, <laughs> not quite queen. Not quite queen. Like Damn. not quite. And again, and it's and it was it's that part which lets me know that like I'm happy you're working. I'm happy you're in this movie. You're doing a lot of things well, but like you're like you can't do this mm. this character mm. full justice, right? Right, she plays the vixen part where she seduces the cop at the yeah, yeah, at yeah. the mansion. Yeah, she does that right. She hits a lot of the other emotional tones incredibly well. I believe yeah. that she falls in love with Tyrese and uh-huh. they become ride or die. But but those that particular moment was just like, 
Mm. I mean, mm. even like Kamora Lee Simmons, like when she shows up, uh-huh. it's just like, <laughs> you guys are kind of field tripping a little right, bit. You know what right. I mean? Like, you know, you put these people in. I wonder like why exactly, what was the conversation behind casting Kamora Lee in Kamora Lee Simmons yeah. in that role? Probably it's, relationships. It had to be. It had to be. You know what? I got a role for you. Yeah. For real, what you got me do? Yeah. Boom. You got Kamora Lee Simmons for what? slinging dresses in the hood. For what? Come on, you know man. what I'm saying? Now, Kamora, Kamora Lee Simmons is a little urban. You know what I'm saying? She, she got it. But, but she, like, she's in the same boat as making good. Like, yeah. y'all not that. Give me, give me a... Uh, Tasha Smith. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying somebody like that. And again, ooh, and the ooh. reason why I call it out is is because I love the authenticity of this movie. Mm-hmm. To be quite honest, yeah. it is a underrated West yes. Coast hood movie. Right. Right? Like, you know, it's it's shot in the hood. It's uh-huh. I like the pacing yeah. of it. I like the, the I like the story, the it. grit. So it's just kind of like that makes it a little bit more Hollywood mm-hmm. when it didn't need to be. Right. Right? Like, right. it didn't have to be. Right. You didn't have to cast Kamora Lee to Simmons. I, I'm i happy you did. Right. I'm glad she was yeah. in it. And, 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 but and, and, but and, it wasn't necessary. And she didn't, she didn't, she wasn't terrible. No. It was, but it was more like, it's more like, I'm looking at the camera because I'm looking at y'all like, it's more like, yeah, oh, okay, but, yeah. Why? Why? Out of all the female actresses you can if have, if you're trying in there, to tell a, like a real story, yeah. if you, what you're trying to do, right? And and you got all of these other beats so well, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, okay, like and, you were a little Hollywood there. And it's weird because sometimes I feel like, damn, I have a tough time doing. I, I'll find myself looking at projects and me thinking like, mm-hmm. oh, they lose a little credibility because they got this famous person in there as a cameo. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's unnecessary. When I see, even now, when I see movies and I see like social media influencers in certain, in certain movies, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Ugh. you know what I'm saying? Here's the thing. I know I'm a social media influencer as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, I feel like the stuff I do online is acting, is narrative, right. comedy, narrative, right, right, right. storytelling. Right. So to see me doing that mm-hmm. in a movie or a TV show is along the same lines of what I do already in my own content. Right. When I'm talking about the social media influencers, I'm talking about the TikTokers or the guys or the girls that just talk mess. And, and, and it's still entertaining and mm-hmm. funny, mm-hmm. but like they're not actors. They're right. really just talking. I would want vlogging you. almost, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Doing shock value stuff like that. Right. And then you see him in the movie or a TV show, you're like, oh, okay, they're just grabbing someone because they have a name and the followers. Yeah. And that's kind of feel like back then in 06, before the TikTok mm-hmm. and the Twitters, they was doing stuff like finding uh, Kamora Lee, who was a, who was a social media, not a social media figure, but at the time she was a, a public figure. She right. Was, right. Uh, Kamora Lee Simpson. I mean, excuse me, Kamora, Kamora Lee Simmons, excuse me. I would like, I would want you to be cast in something. Like, if you show up in something, it would be because there's a character that you're great at, right? And mm. it's not like, oh, there goes Ja just to be Ja, yeah. right? Like, Kamora Lee Simmons in this, again, she did very, to not be an actress, Yeah, like, she she was not rough right. with her acting. She mm. was not, she looked, coming. I, she looked, looked, looked very natural. She said, I don't know him. Come, oh, yeah. yeah, but she it's just kind of like, okay, now that's kind of fish out of water. Right. right, like you know, like she's from real Westchester, right? And Hamilton, right, right, right? right, right. Like you know, sure. like you know, she wouldn't necessarily be slinging that. It's a nitpick. Uh-huh. It's a nitpick, but again, against this backdrop of what I think is this really strong, gritty street drama, there was just some casting choices, mm-hmm. right? That didn't make sense. Another casting choice. Mm-hmm. <sighs> And I have a tough time with this. Yeah. And I'm going to try my best not to do the same thing when I put these people in my projects. Mm -hmm. The kids. Yeah. I didn't like Junior. Yeah. Yeah. Junior is not So hard to do. It's hard to cast kids, I guess, because most kids that are acting, uh, children actors, usually are like that. They were, they were probably public school, private school. Mm -hmm. Their parents had their hands on them. And when you're a, a kid that young, being in movies and TV and commercials mm-hmm. is because your parents are in heavy control of your career yes. and they're pushing you yes. to do these things. You're not going on auditions. You're not pulling up to auditions by yourself at 10. Right, right. So, right. Uh, like Junior, the actor, he seems like a kid, a very good kid. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Very smart. And I just feel like, what's his name? His name is um, 
excuse me, Henry Hunter Hall mm-hmm. Jr. as H, a Henry Hunter Hall. Mm-hmm. He he just seemed a little too too polished for me as a kid growing up with a father that's in prison, the yeah. mom is absentee yeah. Yeah. and raised by his grandma. Yeah. He he goes to a public school mm-hmm. and he eats he, he eats like, you know, the, the ticket lunches. Mm-hmm. And they, they put cornrows in his head to make him look like a little hood kid. <laughs> right, that's not right, a hood kid. Right, right. Henry Hunter Hall is not a hood kid, and nor could he, did he act like a hood kid yeah. to me. Now, obviously, this kid is too old to play uh, junior back then in 06, but the boy from uh, Soul Food. Yes. That kid could have played Tyrese's son. Yeah. And he seemed like a kid from yeah. the inner city. Yeah, yeah. Henry yeah. Hunter Hall doesn't seem like he's from the inner city, even if he is. He might be one of the kids that sat on the porch. And, At 10 years old, you yeah. know, sound like a kid that's running the streets, that has a father, and that has the upbringing that this kid is supposed to have. It's It's got to be tough to find a kid. Because I think that, like, when they find one, they find one that can do enough of what they want. Acting. Maybe not all. A lot of kids who are hood, yeah. ghetto, if you want to say it, mm-hmm. street, from the streets, grew up in the streets with their family, um, they don't even know how to act, most likely, or right. have the patience or the understanding of right. how to put together a performance. Hundred percent. Those yeah. kids. He's he's probably went, Henry Hunter Hall. Probably went to acting classes before, and and he at that age didn't have doesn't understand the emotion enough to be able to convey it. Right. So when you know when he's on the phone talking to his dad, and it's you know, and they're in the middle of the police chase, and the dad is in, you know. There's a different emotion. Yeah. Like, you know, when my when my kids are scared, they talk to me and you can hear the fear in their voice. Right. When my kids are frustrated, you can hear the frustration in their voice. So in those particular moments where Junior has to act, he's not able to channel the emotions that would be right. present in that situation. Right. And so ultimately it takes away from the scene. Yeah. Tyrese is doing his thing. Right. Megan Good is doing her thing, mm-hmm. and then it's like, okay, hey, we got to get through the Thank boys. You, Dad. We got to get through the boys' lines. I love you, Dad. Will you buy me another horse with the spots? Like my kid, under those circumstances, my kids know better than ask for something, right? Yeah. So, like, so to me, He's, it's almost like that's poor writing. Mm-hmm. Be, you know, like that's not realistic. He he's old enough to know the cops are around. Hundred percent. This woman I don't know is crying. He's been in a he's gangster's told- dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> right. With a toy though, which right. is weird. What? He's, Why been, a, he's just been in a shootout. He's in the car with his with his uncle that's been dying. Shot right. And, and, and died. <laughs> no tears? Yeah. This kid doesn't cry at all. Yeah. I'm scared, Daddy. That's <sighs> that's Yeah. You know, and so and so despite all of that, to give him those kind of lines, are, are you still will you buy me a you know what I mean? Like this is not realistic. Right. This is not if realistic. Anything, they, the writing wise, they should have asked Tyrese. Tyrese is supposed to ask his son, what you want me to get you when I see you? Yeah. Huh? I'm like, what you want me to get you, son? To keep his son's mind off mm-hmm. what's going on. Mm-hmm. Let me distract him by talking about, hey, man, you know, what's your, you know yeah. I know you got your favorite toy. You want me to get you the one with the blue and the green? Yeah. Yeah. Is it, uh-huh. Yeah. I, 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 uh, you know what I'm saying? Something. But or Daddy, for him to just out the blue ask for that, mm-hmm. he's not five. Right. This kid is more like eight. Yeah, right. that's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying so it's a little clunky, and then like you know we we you know we we nitpicking. Yes. Um, but like, well, okay, I throw another nitpick. Um, I don't like the way Hollywood movies set in L.A. Um, completely ignore the traffic. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. There's a lot of situations like 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 <laughs> Tyrese. Uh, o- O2 and Megan Good are in the Hollywood Hills, right. right? Lucky is off of like San Pedro, right? And he's like, yeah, I need you here in 10 minutes, right? Like, it's not possible. <laughs> that's <laughs> a dumb, that's a, that's a souvenir thing. <laughs> but, but they do a lot of that because there are a lot of little meetups. There are a lot of meet me here, meet me there. And Tyrese seems to be able to get there in like five minutes. But think about it, that's, that's snowfall all day. I know, and, I know. And, and all LA movies, you gotta, like, here's the thing. Yeah. Only time in LA movies they actually show the traffic is in was it falling down or yeah well with Michael Douglas yeah yeah in yeah. twenty four they never showed it yes so it's just so, like so if you know that just say like meet me in an hour like <laughs> like don't say like meet, meet me, me in ten minutes meet, meet me an hour and a half or such yeah meet me under the bridge say, yeah. in ten minutes hey or meet me over there over there nigga you tell me meet you in ten minutes bro. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm in the Hollywood Hills bro you right bro I'm over here on Fairfax. 
<laughs> and third, bro, what are you talking about? It's gonna Ten take minutes. me an hour. All right, give me an hour and a half. It's All gonna right. take me an hour to get to Pico. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like, I get it. I get it. So I don't like that. And then the last, my last little nitpick, um, is when we got to the ending. I didn't like. I didn't. Like I, I liked the ending, but I didn't like the ending at all. Okay, right? Like, you know, they're there, they're in Mexico, and they're living a very normal life. Mm-hmm. Going to, to school, yeah. Like I, I, this is one of my big movie nitpicks, and it's not necessarily about just this movie, but I hate the fact that like Mexico is seen as a place where you could disappear, right? Right, where you could just literally disappear and form a new life. It happens all the time. Right. So they get to Mexico. He's enrolled in school. He's got a girlfriend. Dreadlocks. They've got a routine. He's got right. dread. How long have they been in Mexico well, yeah, before O2 shows up? Five months. You think that long? Uh, uh, two months. It, it's kind of ambiguous, right? Like, like, but, but, but it's normal. It's a movie, so I ain't tripping about that. I mean, oh, so so O2, O2 pulls his car into the, the water ocean. the ocean that's solid uh-huh. that's a solid getaway move swims underwater ev- evades the, the police awesome he's already damn near in San Diego right <laughs> like he's like right. if he's by the port like essentially they, they put him by the docks right so he's in San Diego San Diego docks uh-huh. which is like docks right it took him five months you think like to well, okay give him I get that. He's got no money. Or does he not? I mean, well, he, he, he might have... Yeah. He might bag and... It just would seem that... And it's wet. It would it seem out. That, that it took him a really long time to get there, well, if that's said, the case. You just say he has no money. Right. So maybe he has to stay low, motels. Maybe he uh, um, and he goes to someone... He has been robbing niggas for the last two days. Right. So so it would seem so, like he could get... You know, when, we, when they kissed mm-hmm. uh, in the in underground structure, mm-hmm. in the parking lot, and then they... they he left with some money, right? He left with something, so it just seems so. The ending just feels a little. But you want it, but you oh, well, let's say two, three months. Let's say two months. Yeah, sixty days. Right. I mean, you know, she then took his braids out and then she she locked his hair up. Yeah, that's two months for sure. Do, does it's, does it seem like that routine that 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 Coco has with Junior would be that? It just seemed like. Like they had really turned the page. Well, here's and like, the thing. like it felt months, like years had passed. Nah, you know, I felt they, like two months was like this. Um, a kid that young mm-hmm. could easily get used to a new situation. I guess that's true. Especially when his dad's been in I jail for true. so long. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's been, he was raised by his grandmother. He's, yeah. he's all over the place. So, um, yeah, I can see that. That's, that's what I'm saying. This, this is a, probably too nitpicky. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a little, too, it was a little too popcorny like, for me. What I, what I didn't like is when they were walking from the house that morning mm-hmm. on the way to school, and she says, so tell me about school. Mm-hmm. Like, you ain't had this conversation with him before? Right, right. But, 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 but because this scene is being so shown at this point, this particular time, mm-hmm. we're talking about how you're supposed to ask him about school when he gets home from school. Yeah. Not the next morning on the way <laughs> right. dropping it off. Right. So a better question or a better conversation to have with a kid that young or a kid in general is like, so... um. What are you gonna? What do you think? Uh, what are you gonna? Uh, what did you learn yesterday? Mm-hmm. Or, or like, what's gonna happen for today? Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying, are you excited for today's yeah. lesson? Are yeah, you yeah, yeah. Excited for today? What's new? Um, are you gonna see your girlfriend today? Like, that's the question. But yeah, they, they filled it in with like, so how, tell me about school. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a it's a bad it, line. It feels like it feels a little clunky. Like I could give them a pass because they are still getting to know each other, right? right? Like you know, that's like a, that's a question you would ask him a long time right, ago, right? Um, one of the other things that I found, I don't know if this is a nitpick or not, I want to get your opinion. So when O2 and Coco are driving through Hollywood and Coco is like, I ain't never been to Hollywood before. Mm-hmm. Right. And she's, you know, and, and, and O2, you ain't never been to Hollywood before. Right. So one part of me is like, there are a lot of people in LA that have never been to Hollywood. Right. Like, so it yeah. does exist. The only thing that like makes it a little bit unbelievable is she's a hustler around the way girl. She seemed like she would have been in a company of rappers. Like 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 her moves and her hustles would have took her to Hollywood. And when she's interacting with the cop and she convinces the cop that like this is why I don't know the security code and you know the the guy that owns the house isn't here and I'm just his assistant. 
if she's that good enough to to kind of cop about what life is like for a kept woman in the Hollywood Hills, how could she know that if she ain't never been to a place like that before? Nitpicky. Isn't it? Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. <laughs> okay. Because I didn't know what Burbank was until I was 28. Damn. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't. I, I don't think I even knew what a no ho was. I know there was Hollywood. I know there was West Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Didn't know there was a North Hollywood. Okay. Damn sure didn't know anything about a Glendale yeah. or a Burbank. You just never got that I knew far. about Pasadena. Right. Any any city outside of South Central, I knew Pasadena. I knew El You knew Monte. where the black people were. I knew Covina was mm-hmm. somewhere. I'd never been there before, but I knew there was a... I know Pasadena was all water bloods be at. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. That's right. literally what I thought. My right. aunt Mona used to live in Pasadena. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, but Burbank and... The school, anything past the one on one freeway? No, right. I had no clue what it was until I started doing comedy mm-hmm. and started going to the Ha Ha Cafe and going to Flappers, the Ice in House. Burbank, Ice House, and, and you know what I'm saying yeah, past yeah. dinner. I didn't know any of these things existed. I knew past dinner my whole life, right? But like, um, yeah, anything South Long Beach, mm-hmm. Downey, you know, Compton, Carson, Gardena. I knew all, all about you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying all those places, but Torrance and hey, Hawthorne. But yeah, not. Not Burbank or North Hollywood. So if you call me, if, if you, the first time I went to um, Hollywood to mm-hmm. hang out and party, I was like 20, 20? Yeah. And then I had one of my homeboys' well, how, IDs. How old is she? How old is Coco? Probably around that. Okay. I oh, guess it makes sense. Oh, well, well, you know what? She, and old enough to, she's probably 25 or younger because right. she had a son that got killed. Okay. You remember? Um, I guess it makes so, sense. So, and maybe and, I'm being too and, and women are women. So, women know how to finesse anybody. Yeah. She knows how to deal with cops because she's been dealt with cops for years. This is true. Now, I, honestly, I don't think that she she's knew how to sell sex. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wet yeah, herself, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And throw a robe on and say, and I mean, the, I, the idea of me being someone's secretary, you don't have to, yeah, she, she, under, she probably seen enough movies to know that, you yeah. know, like lawyers and doctors have, like, or these businessmen yeah. have, like, these sexy young secretaries. Because she, I mean, like, she really came across as I live here. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, and it, and her response in the journey kind of going through Hollywood and even kind of being in, a, in that house almost felt like it would seem a little bit more foreign, like that life. Mm-hmm. What's it, when, when she talks about her life and what's happened, it's, it's, it's difficult. Like it'd be, it would be difficult, you know, for like somebody in the hood to now have to like play a businessman. Mm-hmm. Even just for five minutes, and not draw suspicion, right? Like, yeah. and so, I, and so, in that point, like, like if she's never been in a house like that, she really sounded like she was very familiar. It was very convincing enough to enough to persuade a skeptical cop, cop yeah. right? That like the alarm goes off. I belong here. Not let she know. So when she sat down and offered offered the niggas some buns. It was very easy, yeah. but up until that point, like it was just kind of like, do I believe that Coco knows this world well enough to portray? Yeah, you did figure because I, I could be like, okay, she this chick, all she got to do is say, I, I don't know the code because I'm his secretary and he said to them, I'm not supposed to be here, but mm-hmm. you know, him and his wife are gone with the family. And, yeah, so I'm just supposed to be here. It's for very that. sophisticated. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, maybe, maybe, but maybe the I, bar is maybe the bar is lower than. I, 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 I think it's easier for a hood chick to act valley than mm-hmm. it is for a valley chick to act hood. Yeah. I think if they if they didn't put in the I never been in Hollywood. Okay. I think I think that's once we like go through all of that before Maybe we get to the Hollywood. How hills, I would write it? Yeah. I, how I would write it is I ain't never been to Hollywood. Yeah, right. What are you talking about? You ain't never been to Hollywood. Mm-hmm. No, I've never been to Hollywood. Why you say that? I'm sure you've been around all kind of ballers and niggas. And, yep. And yep. she'd be like, whatever. And she has been to Hollywood. Mm-hmm. But she hasn't been to Hollywood as in, in a good way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that that quick comment, that, that, could, that could have been the same scene. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah, she's, she's you're a little bit more experienced than you. Act Coco like definitely been to Hollywood. Right, right, right. Like I, don't, like, I don't believe that Coco ain't never been to Hollywood. Right. Right? Like, you know, a, a woman that, that fine who knows how to... Use what you got to get what you want. Has been in a nightclub in Hollywood. The only reason why I don't think she has mm-hmm. is because she uh she uh isn't that type of girl. She isn't like she isn't like the girl the girl from the girl from the hood and baby boy that was trying to get him to cheat on Yvette. Yeah, she's not scandalous like that. Right, she's not scandalous. She's out there selling dresses, mm-hmm. not ass. True. You know what I'm saying? 
as mm-hmm. opposed to a chick, if she was, if she had been to Hollywood and been around ballers, then that would be her job. That mm-hmm. would be her hustle. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be selling um, dresses on Florence. Yeah. yeah, I don't think those two girls are the same chick. Yeah, another nitpick. Um, that that one trap house that ain't got no working toilet. Yeah, they in there. They in there chilling. <laughs> <Nigga>. <laughs> they in there chilling. Shitty ass. Yeah, chilling with girls. Right. You know what I mean? And, right. And the, and the toilet doesn't work. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the trap house, though. Yeah. I've been in those type of houses. Mm-hmm. All niggas doing is playing video games and the yeah. strap is right there. Yeah. And just yeah. Hanging out in the girls. But but the girls, uh, we about to go. We about to go up the store, up the mm-hmm. street real quick. I ain't got no bathroom at work. Yeah. I can see that happening. Yeah. So, uh, so. And who they chose to cast is a, is another reminder. Those don't, they, they were not hood niggas. Yeah. Uh, one, one, one is, is the homie Quo. Yeah. From from that that he's from Dina from the yeah, he is from Dina yeah. but you know he's got to look he's also a hill figure model but right but I I can take him looking like that but would he be in a trap in 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 South Central I think because you know him from Quo same thing with Kamora Lee yeah right because Kamora Lee is just Genieco right right this, you know what I'm saying and Genieco her her mom her mom black her daddy Asian yeah like or like, vice versa her, her dad black her mom Asian and she a uh, black a yeah. blazing chick from the hood yeah you know I'm not saying? I'm not hating on homie. But it's just kind of like it's it's the same kind of vibe. And then the other homie the, was the, the one that used the, to be the, in, insecure. Which one was he? The uh the one that was Amanda Seal's husband in Insecure. That was him, huh? Yeah, he was the other dude on the couch. The only way I'll accept that is if he's really from LA and yeah. really want the Crenshaw or really want the right. You know what I'm saying? It's possible. Like I do have, for example, I got a homeboy. He's a director, and a writer, and a producer too. Mm-hmm. He uh. Went to Crenshaw High School, grew up in South Central LA, and you would not think it. You would think that he went to a private school, Harvard West. You know what I'm saying? You, you would think he went there, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he's from the hood. And yeah. before he and he moved to LA as a young dude, but before that he's from St. Louis. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, he's yeah. he doesn't know anything yeah. but hood shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I he get grew it. up in every hood that he's that this ever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, in the worst right. of the world, he went from St. Louis to South Central LA, went to right. Crenshaw High, right? And but he was a kid that wanted to do. Bigger things than what he what, what he was mm-hmm. around. So mm-hmm. he worked at a, a movie theater out in the valley. Yeah, and he read books and he watched Nine Hundred Two One Zero. That that's the shit he you know what I'm saying he mm-hmm. loves watching. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying. So he's a hood nigga that has like valley valley guy written all over him because that's how I think that's what he wanted right. to be. But he would have never been in a trap house. He never would have been in a trap house. Right. But I, that kid, I don't know. He I, like I'll if, take it. I'll, I'll take that. Like one. if I think about it, like Training Day was better cast. Mm-hmm. And Training Day had cameos, right? right, right. You got Snoop in it. You got yeah, Missy Gray. Got hood, yeah, you know what I mean. Uh-huh. But but it's almost kind of like nobody in Training Day that we run into in the hood feels out of place. Right. True. They all right. they you know mm-hmm. like the 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 three guys and let me see your gun, Holmes, Alonzo. Yeah. Like them them three niggas look authentic. Even the even the the niece that got assaulted. Oh, yeah. She feels authentic, yeah. right? Shit, pristine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the niece, the niece, yeah, for sure. So the thing with waist deep is is that we've got like we we've, we've got maybe some questionable casting decisions, and then we've got some like fish out of water casting decisions, and it's like, man, you were doing so good, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, like you've like I'm into this movie, right? I like this movie. And I, I yes. thought it was good. I, I thought, thought it was, it was fun. Yeah, like, yeah. and so and it and none of these casting decisions, I think, were going to make the movie that much better. True, true, true. Right. It's not. It's not like the casting decisions on these particular actors. Ruined the movie. I exactly. made the movie, or 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 made the movie worse. Mm-hmm. I don't think it made it worse. I, I think it didn't help. Right. It just was this there. But For example, oh, but yeah. what's interesting? Okay, sorry to cut you off. Yeah. But like, if you instead of Kamora Lee Simmons, mm-hmm. you cast somebody that looks like she mm-hmm. sells dresses, but will kill a motherfucker. Shoot a nigga down. Yeah. It make it it increases the tension of that scene. Right. That much more mm-hmm. because you because you're gonna you're about to rob her and there's stakes, mm-hmm. there's consequences mm-hmm. because she's a dangerous motherfucker. Right. You never feel like Kamora Lee Simmons is dangerous right. in that scene. So right. there's no tension. I'm not like I know that whatever it is, they're gonna get what they're gonna get and they're gonna mm-hmm. get out of here and they're not really in danger. Right. When they should be. Because they robbing somebody that's connected, right? But because of who you've chosen to cast, I don't feel any fear while I'm watching the scene. Mm-hmm. When they go to the trap house with the boys playing the video game, because those guys, like the, 
I'll give you a case in point. Remember when we did Straight Outta Compton? Mm -hmm. Remember when OG Two Tone got on the bus? Yeah. I was fucking terrified uh -huh. because OG Two Tone uh -huh. looked like he would have been yeah. on that street. Absolutely. If you cast that those, if you cast that guy in the trap house, or you know those type yeah. of people that look like that, you know, if, you, it you changes know the is? movie. Yeah, true, true. And we didn't. I agree. I mm -hmm. agree. Now that you said that, I agree. These niggas is young niggas in the trap house. They should be way more devious. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Even, even playing video games too. Yes, but it should be you a... You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But like, um, and then on top of that, with the... Uh, what, was, what, was, what was I going with it? We were talking about casting. If you cast uh, another chick, like I, 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 I think Megan did a good enough job. Yes. I think, believe it or not, Game did a great job to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. We needed more of Game. I think we needed yeah. two or three more scenes yeah. Yeah. with him for the bad guy to be a bigger situation. His die, his death was not as was was a, a little uh, wasn't was anticlimactic. Anticlimactic, yeah, man, for sure. Yeah, uh, especially since this is a it's a real. It wasn't an accident. He purposely t took his son to basically ransom him. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying yes. You, I know you got that money. I know where you know. I know you know where the money is. Mm -hmm. So get it. You got it. Twenty four hours or forty eight hours or whatever, mm -hmm. and. One my nit, my nitpick is he went to a trap house. He went to two different houses and got some bread mm -hmm. and got some deposit box keys. Went to the bank and then robbed the bank. Yeah, two banks, right? Or at least two. They said two. Yeah, and they shouldn't have enough money. It was how much did they need? They needed a hundred thousand. <laughs> so they needed what? They need a hundred thousand? Hundred thousand or something like that? Yeah. Come on. I was tripping when they had only like thirty thousand. Just thirty bands. Y'all did all this work for 30 bands? No. <laughs> right, right. I don't believe it. Right. But right. I think they, they, they needed it to be at least that much money um, for them to keep doing, have mm -hmm. to keep doing robberies. Yeah. Because the money should have been more. It should have been like half a million or right. something like that. Right. It's, and, I mean, and then there's 100, the jewels. 000, you rob one bank, you should be able to get that. Yeah. It's the That's jewels. Fair. Let me ask you this before we get into some awards. And the jewelry. Yeah. Which looks fake as hell. <laughs> that, that shit looked like, like the shit that was wearing it in one videos. Right. Um... You would know, or maybe you would know. Like, that's another movie trope that, like, there's always a guy that that you can move some jewelry to. Yeah. Like, you know, like, like, is that yeah. is that only is that reason? Only real life? reason why I say that is because I know the I know a homie that got cousins mm -hmm. that do that. They well, I don't know about still, but like within the last five to eight years, they was going downtown and they was smashing. Um, and they know how to move that they jewelry. Know get, they know how to get it done. Yeah. And so what that usually means is you 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 take this jewelry and you take it to the Asian dudes. You go to the you go mm -hmm. you go to another shop and sell it to and the sell shop it to them. You right. know what I'm saying. And do you sell it piece by piece? Because yeah. in the movies it's always like this, to. this cachet. Like you yeah. know, I give you all of this for two hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Right. That's not how it works in real in real life. It's like you take one necklace. Or one watch, and unless, kind of, you try, unless you're trying to get it all fast, you get it all fast. Then you offer it as, as a deep this discount. It's worth nine hundred twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, but I'm gonna give it to you for one seventy five. Yeah, just take it all. Give me one seventy five. So someone looks at this and get that little diamond thing, dee, mm -hmm. dee, dee, the little mm -hmm. machine or the little little magnifying glass. Yeah. Like, How much for all this? She give me give me uh two hundred, one seventy five deal. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. No one. I'm about to make. Over a million dollars with this shit, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna give you one seventy five for it because that's yeah. what I, you know, what I'm yeah. saying. And this dude don't care because he, he, he got seventeen dollars in his pocket. Mm -hmm. So one hundred seventy five thousand. Hell yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, and I'll come see you again in about a month with yeah. another bundle of shit I stole. Right, you know what I'm saying. That's their hustle. So it feels dangerous in real life. Like if I and it happens though. That's yeah. why you know T Grizzly got caught up. He went to jail for that shit. Yeah, for breaking, going, walking into a diamond store. A uh, jewelry store and just walking in there with a hammer mm -hmm. and pulling all the shit into a bag and going. They, you know what I'm saying they they either wearing some of that shit and getting rid of some of that. Yeah, most that, of it. That's one of my biggest nightmares. My one of my one of my biggest fears, job, is to come across a come up. Right, mm -hmm. like I don't want to find a bag of money. I don't want to find a bag of jewels. I don't want to find no riches. Why not? All right, not a bag of jewels. I don't want that either. Yeah, a bag of money. See, the only thing is, this is my this is my fear. Uh -huh. My fear is is that large sums of money, either in a bag or a briefcase, has an owner. Right. Right? And that owner will need to 
will be doing everything that they can to find that, to find that money. Yeah, next right? era. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and somehow, some way, that money is going to be linked back to me. You think that? Okay. And and it will not be as simple as, oh, I'll just give it back. Okay. Right? Like, you know, yeah. so like if 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 you find something that belongs to a real gangster, a real thug, there's too much too many connective tissues. I mm-hmm. I just feel like somebody's gonna figure out that like, you know, this guy picked it up. Right, I get it. You watch too much movies. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I know. That's, that's, that's In real is. life, you could probably just just right. walk away. I ain't seen it. I, yeah. Well, not not with a gang of bread. I remember in the back of my, in the back alley of my house back mm-hmm. in the day, there was like trails of like five dollars, a hundred dollars, ten bucks, a hundred dollars. It was like probably probably um uh probably about thirteen hundred to fifteen hundred dollars right. worth of dollar of money. Because someone had robbed something, was running through the the the, the, the mm-hmm. alley. Yeah, that's and easy. They were dropping shit. That that part is easy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I take that, that shit, shit all day. Every yeah, day. Went, I wasn't about a bike and then all kinds of shit. You but know like the briefcase. But like the briefcase, like I would look around with like five hundred grand in. Is it. there surveillance? Mm-hmm. If there's not, then yeah. maybe I'm looking around. I think I don't take that money. Yeah. Like I don't. I feel you. And the part of me now, not now, but like mm-hmm. as a youngster. In my teens, I'd probably be smarter. Yeah. I'll, probably, if, if, I would, I'll probably be like, "Hey, man, hey, I probably should just fall back, yeah, and not and not and not uh, and not take this because I don't know what it comes with." Like I would like if I was, let's say, I was to come across a bag of jewels or diamonds, right? Since we're talking movie shit, I would be embarrassed to call you to be like, "Ja, first of all, I don't want to even involve you. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't even want it." Because yeah. if I got all the diamonds, it's a dangerous thing. To, uh, it's a dangerous thing dangerous to have. And if I yeah. call you like, Ja, do you know somebody that can, you know, help me move these diamonds? Now you fucking involved, yeah, right? And now you put maybe let's say you do put me in contact with 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 the person. You're part of that. And now that person, somebody that you know and trust, is now gonna help me peddle my ill gotten gains. So whoever's attached to these fucking diamonds want me, want you, want your homie. I don't even want the fucking bag. Let me tell you. And let me tell you what this is. It's you. It's how you were raised and mm-hmm. the life, the lifestyle that you lived, that you led, and you lived before a certain part, before a certain age in my life. Mm-hmm. I would have for sure took that bag. I know, <laughs> right? And and, and I would have asked questions to the right people. Mm-hmm. I probably would have stashed some of the cheese and told some of my homeboys, "Hey, ask your older brothers mm-hmm. or, or or cousins or dad if they can." You know what I'm saying? I grew up in the hood, so I grew up in a situation where mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say this. I will. We'll talk. We'll talk yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, I, I just grew up in a place where it's very easy to get into some wrong shit. Right. It's all around you, and there are no and secrets. there's ways to get young. Are you looking for a young, aggressive dude? Yeah, that's 12, 13, and that's down to do something. Mm-hmm. And because he's still a kid, but he's smart enough and big enough to do. Some shit he shouldn't be doing, right. but he's still a kid. Right. So he, at that at that point, I remember. Do you remember when the kid, the black boy, that got tried to, tried as an adult? It was all over the news. Wait, this is like ninety four or five. What did he do? Six. He had a. He killed the guy wrestling in the yard. I can't remember. I think so. Yeah. I, I, I'm gonna look it up. He did like a wrestling move on a neighbor. I remember. And they and they, they tried his and ass. I remember they was yeah. like my, my boy's mom was like, now see what they doing? They mm-hmm. locking up boys. Mm-hmm. They putting boys in, in prison with men. Yep. Y'all gonna be like that? Y'all gonna keep on doing the dumb shit y'all been doing? Mm-hmm. I remember that whole conversation. Yep. Yep. So as a kid, I can see how um I I, I got I see a bag of jewelry mm-hmm. or I see something fall off a, uh, off a truck. Mm-hmm. I'm picking it up like, bro. We gonna find a way to flip this. Yeah. Like like now product, like product clothes belts. I'm down to I'm down to steal. That, yeah, <laughs> right, right. but not yeah. but not high high crime shit. I, like jewels, and diamonds, and shit like that. I tell you, somebody what, coming back for that. Somebody and and even if this is why I'm, this is why I won't even touch the shit. Even if I take it and find my way to the type of person that'll give me hundred and fifty thousand dollars out the door, why would and I'm a nobody. Right. I'm not connected to nobody. Yeah. There's no repercussions. Just shoot me. It makes so much more sense <laughs> for for them to just folks, yeah, just yeah. just jack me, yeah. right? Like you know, give me them diamonds, get the fuck out. 
Yeah. Right? Like, you like, know. Like a snowfall. <laughs> exactly. Like you know? snowfall. They, they went and got the dude. Like, man, this guy jacked me. Mm-hmm. I'm calling you because you because you a tough and rough dude with a, with a rep. Yeah. You know, help us get this money back. He went and got the money back mm-hmm. from the dude, raped the dude. Yeah, that was And then it was shit. like, hey, man, appreciate it. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this. Yeah. You to do nothing. Because you called me. Yep. To get, to get this you back went, the bad You went guy. over your head. I'm the bad guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I don't want to call nobody, child. Just come with me. Okay, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't, yeah. need, I don't even so want we, the money. We, we not in that life. Yeah. So if you were in the hood and you know and you are, and you accessible to so many other niggas as yeah. no gooders, yeah. Then you, we we, we got to figure out how to get this going. Yeah. yeah. I, I just hope I just hope I'm never. Oh, you not? I, I hope I'm never. In you the, would never be because the neither thing, would I. Yeah, because the thing is, is is that like like if we walk out the studio right now uh-huh. and you know it'd be night, it'd be late it'd at be night when we yeah. done, and there's just a random car and a in a briefcase. And there's like, John, there's fucking million dollars. If you see a, a, a car with the engine running mm-hmm. and the door open, I'm gonna take a stack. <laughs> I'm, not nah. gonna, I'm not gonna take the whole thing. I ain't gonna take the whole thing. I'm yeah. gonna take more than the stack. Because <laughs> are you gonna be mad at yourself? Yeah, a right. stack? Yeah. I'm like, gonna spend that in three days. I am going to leave the the briefcase there, but the door is with open. a lot of that the means money in got it. Out and ran. Yeah, but I'm I'm gonna take what I can put in my pockets. I probably won't take nothing. Because I feel like Based that's, off the scenario I just gave you. Because I, I almost feel like even if somebody if, if somebody comes back for the money and it's there and they're like, man, we missing two stacks. I feel like ain't nobody going to put on like the full court investigative press for the two stacks. I feel like I got a better chance of disappearing. Unless you're a psychopathic or drug lord or, yeah. or a kingpin. I want all my money. Nino Brown? Yeah. I want whatever sent. Yeah. I want everything. And now I'm working for somebody to work off this debt. Yeah. Um, okay, let's get into some quick awards. Quick awards. Uh, if y'all haven't seen Waist Deep, go see it, man. Great movie. Good it enough. It was dope. It, 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 it was a cool little tale. Good enough. And I can see how making uh, Coco and O2 can fall in love with each other in a few days. Yeah. Because they both came from nothing. They both it don't makes have sense. nothing. It's a, but I wanted a scene outside of before she kissed him. I wanted another scene before that one to kind of show her that this dude is different. Yeah. He's a kid, a rough dude that, that, that all he wants is to live life yeah. and be out the way with his son. I mean, he gives and, her the necklace. You that know, was out, out of all the, the out of all the jewels, that, he saves one for her. You know, yeah. They, but I, I I feel like it was a little too soon. Yeah, or a little. I, I wanted the execution to be a little better. Yeah. on those two scenes. But it was. I think it was a great Bonnie and Clyde. I yeah. think we've seen Bonnie and Clyde done way worse for sure in this and in uh-huh. this particular instance. Like, Their back back was against the wall too. Yeah, they had to. Yeah, if if Tyrese had gave us a little bit more. Then, then grump face Tyrese, like I think the romance part could have worked a lot better. But when you think, why would he? Not, why would he be anything but grumpy? I get it. Give me any part of, of, the, of that of those three four days. I get it. Where he's laughing or make a mm-hmm. joke or crack a joke. The only problem is, and I, I much love for, for Tyrese, like that's his pocket. Like he always right. plays. But I think that also grumpy. I think the character in the in the project the story. Kept him in that. Person. Yeah, I guess yeah, it was. Just, it, it worked in his favor. It's true because you know what he he should not have been a man of many words. Yeah, or not should not have been a man of of a lot of emotion and, and like, flirtation. I think it would make sense for her to approach him. She kissed him. Yeah, and as my he, he not thinking about getting no ass, but if it's in his lap, mm-hmm. literally, I'm here for it. Two quick questions. What's that? Then? Do they survive as a couple? Yeah. I think so. Hell yeah. She's dealt with way worse niggas. I think so. Hell yeah. Um, I haven't done this in a while. What would Fresh do? <laughs> Fresh is not getting chased by the police. Yes. Fresh is not even getting caught by the police. Yes. And Fresh is going to blame everything on Big Meat. Fresh, oh. Fresh is going to find a way for Big Meat. That meetup is going to be like a... A, a staying operation. Yeah. It's, it's going to be... What do they what do they call that? Um, Where they... um. God, I just um, why am I drawing a blink? Where you where they put you in a trap. This is a trap. There's, uh, there's a specific word for it that I'm drawing a blink on that I feel so dumb. Not a sting operation. Not a sting, uh, but like, you know, it's a setup? Not a setup. I'm I'm drawing a blink. You talking but, about is it is it terminology that police use? It's like a military thing. Like a like oh. a military word for like when they set a trap ambush. Ambush. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> My bad. Um Fresh would have set up an ambush. Uh-huh. Like Fresh would have found a way to have like the niggas at the trap house, Kamora Lee Simmons, 
You know what I mean? This other dude Them that, cops. This other dude that, that was over control of uh, Coco. Yeah. We never saw him. Yeah, like there was another. That threw me off too. Yeah, because he was like kind of like, you know, like robbing everybody. Fresh would have found a way to get them all in one spot where they go all, all kill right. each other. Yeah. True. Then it's done. But it's a movie. He yeah. fell into the water. We've yeah, seen yeah. we've seen white boy movies that do that too. He jumps into the water, the car explodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he swims off somewhere and and, and lives. It makes sense. And right. We'll take it. Like, yeah. you know, it, it I mean it 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 totally makes sense. I guess the other like kind of like nitpick is is that they had effectively gotten away from the police when they pulled into that when they pulled into the parking structure. You think so? They were waiting for him. Well, I mean, like when so when when O2 comes speeding out, they come speeding forward, mm-hmm. right? So I guess that was the right move. Yeah. To get the other car, to you use the one to. car as the bait car, mm-hmm. and then for ha- to have her like kind of like pull out. Yeah, imagine if they were all in the same car together. They yeah, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Um, you okay. trying to find them nitpicks. You trying yeah. to get them yeah. Yeah. But I really like this movie. Nah, but there, but there too. are some parts where it was just like, I think like, like a part of the nitpicks are this could have been really good. Yeah. It, you, it you watch the movie like I'm I'm into this movie. I'm like, really into this movie. <sighs> yeah. Okay, okay. They, they bring you back. They bring mm-hmm. you back. They bring you back. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, but but I remember another, it better. Another another nitpick, mm-hmm. yes. At the beginning where the guy gets his arm chopped off by Big Meat, mm-hmm. why the hell is Lucky there chilling like the homie? That's what I'm saying. And then later on in the movie, they they beating him up because he owed money. Yeah. Like, unless he unless we saw him borrow the money that day, yeah. and then the next day, That's a great he gets nitpick. beat up. Why That's was a great a, nitpick. Why, 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 why run him down and make him pull over and then whoop his ass yeah. and threaten him? Be, and then and then and then and then uh in broad daylight broad at a daylight. peace rally right. that nobody saw. No one saw. <laughs> in right? the Mert Park. In the Mert Park. Come, Come on, on, man. Bruh. Come on. And man. then we you we, we, we was just hanging with this nigga the other day and yeah. he saw you. You saw him. Like you That's they would arrest you. That's point. what I'm saying. Sometimes parts of the story and That's this is a great point. And I, as much as I like the movie, this is why sometimes you get like a classic and sometimes you get like mm-hmm. nah, you get this. And you, you get this. You get you know this. what I'm saying? Which I still enjoy. I'll yeah. watch it again too. MVP. MVP. Um MVP is O2. Otis. I think it's O2. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think like he put the plan together. Yeah. She was a he also knows a good leader is a person that can delegate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he was on it from from the very beginning. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. Um yeah, O2's the MVP. For sure. Like not only does not only does he secure the dough for his boy. He kills the bad guy, mm-hmm. gets away, makes the ultimate sacrifice for his his the new son. girl and his the son to get away, mm-hmm. and gets away with it. Yes, and yes. gets to Mexico. And, and, and I think that I, I think they last. Yeah, I think they last. Um, LVP, LVP, um, LVP. For me, uh, it's also O two. Um, oh shit! And, and and it really comes down to trying to put hydrogen peroxide on a bullet wound. <laughs> right. they clean the wound. Yeah, I know. But it's just like he needed more medical. Like, like they literally was like, like tissue, like, like paper towels, yeah, and <laughs> and hydrogen peroxide. Should have went to the homie that did that, that. That's that. His wife's a nurse, and she be having stuff, yeah. Yeah. in the in the in the cabinet. And he went in and went there. Something you should have rolled by King Drew, and literally shoved him out. Right. My, you know, my my pop used to work at, at Drew. And he said we used to see that all night long, right. where just a car would come up, and a, they would kick one of the homies out, and the homie would be shot or stabbed, and we would take him to the ER, Damn. right? Like you know, O two, you had to know the wound was serious. But here's the thing that he, you weren't just going to be able to just keep driving away. But that's that's the thing. He they, it was realistic to like the world, okay. like. like he died on the way. Right. He, 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 I'm going to Mexico with y'all, bro. And he died. Like, I, I I think that we knew that he was going to die from jump. But like, right. It makes sense. Trying to go into the bathroom. Let me ask. Let me ask you a question. If you were driving around with a homie that had been shot, do you think that there's any way that you could like forget that he had been shot? Right. Like you know, like <laughs> you were talking to him. He was like. <laughs> <laughs> right, like in a situation like that, if Yo, there's look, a guy that's shot in the car, my eyes on them the whole time, the entire time, <laughs> kind of for like the next thirty, forty minutes, everybody's gonna be focused in. You're not like everybody just kind of like, 
just forgot he was shot. This motherfucker dies in the back. He's seat. already dead. He's been They're dead like, for yeah, man, forty you minutes. Lucky? Yeah, you're lucky. Lucky. So, yeah. These motherfuckers have been dead since they were in Tustin, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> he's been dead Damn since it. Tustin, and they just noticed. That's a, that's a bit of a nitpick. Yeah. So, so uh-huh. it's either O2 for that or the rest of the crew. Unless they were getting shot out, unless they were already in the shootout, they were right. getting distracted but by something But the thing is, 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 it's the reaction to O2 dying that gets Lucky the attention dying. of the police. Uh, I'm sorry. It's yeah. the uh, the reaction of Lucky, that when it, once they realize Lucky is dead, that they get to swerving in the car that draws the attention of the That's police. That's bad, yeah. Come on, yeah. man. Come on. Yeah. He swerves, and that's what I'm talking I mean, even once you got out the hood, I understand, like, we can't take them. The block is hot. We can't take them to, to none of the hospitals in the hood. That makes sense. Right. But once you get once you get out of South, once you get south of Long Beach... You better take them to a Montebello hospital. Yeah, that's what I'm you saying. Better take them to a spot in Lakewood. Yeah, like, you know, once you get out the hood... You know, where and you're not being followed. Right. Get him some medical attention. Yeah. And and again, like nobody's expecting you to be sitting up in the waiting room while, you know, your <laughs> your mugshot is on TV. So everybody looking at the mugshot, you in the lobby. Just... Yeah. Yeah. That's another that's another movie overused movie trope. Uh-huh. Where like the, the person is uh it's always the cashier. Oh snap, you're the chick for the you're lottery. The, you're the he, right, you know, and then and then he played it out. You guys are like the modern day bottom clyde. Little problems with the movie, but yeah. that's my OVP. Little, little writing, little writing, uh, chinks and armor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. Uh, my my LVP is Darius Love Rock. Yeah, yeah there's no reason for him to be there. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? You got beat up real quick to be somebody's lieutenant, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right, like right. you know, um, unless you were going to come back in the movie, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, let's give it fists. Uh, five Black Fists, all time classic. One Black Fist movie that got made. How do you rank Waste Deep? Who? Um, damn. I want to give it. I want to give it a strong three. Yeah. I'm a, I wanted to give it a four, but I'm like, nah. It is not a classic. But it, and it, and it's not a four because four is like it almost was a classic. Mm-hmm. Three, a strong three is like it's almost a good. It's almost well, it's, it's a good movie. Yeah. But it's a almost almost a classic. Could have been a four. Almost, almost, it could have been a four. It could have been a four. Uh-huh. It's a three. Yeah. It's 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 a three. There are parts of this movie that I really like. I needed more of the the uh the uh, antagonist. I needed more mm-hmm. of him. And uh more the villain, more the big bad. Yeah. Right. And maybe uh, maybe there's a cop mm-hmm. that we have a face to. Yeah. Like in the town there was uh what's his name? Man, the last name the, the actor. We uh, in the town with yeah the, yeah yeah like, he was like a uh the, the, the detective that's trying to find him mm-hmm. and he he might see um, that's a great movie. By the he way. might, if, man, come on now. If it was a black bus, <laughs> yeah, we'd watch yeah. it. Um, we put it on there, but yeah. So uh, I just feel like it was. It, it kind of made me feel like it felt like lesser of a budget movie, mm-hmm. even though it wasn't because there weren't. There was no perspective to the police, right? And you know what I'm saying. I would have I. So I looked at the at the director Vonnie Curtis Hall's you know filmography, and he's got some some good films in there. Like Gridlocked is one of his. You know, mm-hmm. Waist Deep is is one of his. I would have loved for him to have more opportunities to have made more movies because I think he had, I think there was real talent there. Right. Right. Like, you know, it felt a little bit like Antoine Fuqua, right? Like, you yes. know, like I think that like if the guy had gotten more shots, it'd have been awesome. Right. But, he, but overall, this guy it's a deserved movie. to have more shots yeah. for sure. It's a good, it's good. It's a solid three. Mm-hmm. Solid three. Yeah. I agree. And he wrote this bad boy. That's crazy. Yeah, it was good. Mm-hmm. They just yeah, man. Just casting director fucked it up. Yeah, uh, not majorly, but enough to for us to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, we we got to get better at hood kids, man. We got to get better at hood kids. Ah, um, uh, I see why the kid was cast. The kid is his son. Okay, he's a director's son. Okay. I, oh, Hens Hall, yeah. yeah, yep, Henry Hall, yep. I'm, I'm literally just oh, looked at it. Okay, yeah. all right. That but see, dude, my point exactly. A kid like this wouldn't play this character unless he's the damn director's son, <laughs> right? Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. This I'm not bad, bad at it. You know? I understand. You got to put your kids on. Little black nepotism makes that, sense. Yeah, that, but that's makes why sense. you got to. Uh, yeah, man. It's it, it, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's what it is. It's what it is, man. Uh, good movie. Solid, solid three. Mm-hmm. Waist deep. I might watch it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch it again just because yeah. I just want to. Good. Yeah, it was for good. sure. And game need more more characters like that. He did a good job. Yeah, 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, let me say this. Let me say, man. We know he's a monster. Mm-hmm. He does his thing. Um, all right, man. That's that's another episode of Black Busters. I'm your host, Big Ja, along mm-hmm. with my co-host. I'm not. I'm not tone deep. Tone two. Tone two. Tone two. You know what I'm saying tone two. I like that. Yeah, I like that. And we are out of here, man. Catch us next time. Be good or be good at it. Pum to the max. Black Busters.